so so we are discussing here the inheritance part in java as we know that in java only simple inheritance and multi level inheritance only these two are supported first one is simple inheritance and second one is multi level inheritance these both are supported now here we are going to see simple inheritance with the example we are going to see in simple inheritance we are going to see what is the class diagram then for that uh, what is the program we are going to see in simple inheritance means what only it is only one level so one class is inherited by another class only like two class will be involved so here this is called as class diagram so th they will ask they will ask, they will give class diagram based on the class diagram we have write the equivalent code like this for example here it is a class a this is class a but whereas this is class b in class a we have one variable called k colon int means variable is k which is of type int type and here down we have test one method because in parenthesis it is given therefore it is a method here compared to here k is just variable here test one is a method colon void means what type it is going to return test one method void type it is going to return so in this class a one variable is there which is of type int k and there is one method called test one is there which is going to return of type void so this is about first class this is a super class and here there is a sub class why it is a sub class the class this is this is getting means this class is getting inherited by this class so this is a sub class here this is a super class so so here this is called as super class whereas this one is called as sub class okay here this class is class a whereas this is class b here we don't have any variable like k is in it before and also there is no method so there is no variables there is no method simply one class b we have created and we are inheriting from this class a so now this is a class diagram let us convert this class diagram into java code suppose class a so just write as class a open the brace and close the brace inside we have one variable called k which is type int so int k it is int k int k is equal to so suppose you want to put value 10 inside k then you can declare like this int k is equal to 10 semicolon so because you are in java statements you can write semicolon so semicolon i added so k colon int is equal to like int k colon is equal to 10 i did done for this method i want to write method now so return type is void so i am putting void as a return type and method name is test1 with no arguments so and this method has to open and closing brace so opening of the method and closing of the method inside i am putting one system dot out dot printl statement that is sop system dot out dot printl so that it will print as int test1 so whenever this method is executed it will print as int test1 means evaluate test1 method like that it will print so this method i have developed then method is completed here then class also completed so this class is represented equal to like this so what i did class a to this variable i have declared with k as 10 and this method i have written then i have closed the brace so this is a class a equivalent then same way for class b i have written it as class b to represent this arrow mark as inheriting in java there is a keyword called extends e x t e n d s extends means it will extend okay so whenever you use extends then it will see which class for extending a class means class b is going to extends class a which means class b is extending class a right exactly this arrow class b to class a to represent in java we write like this class b this arrow mark means extends a class x so here so means class b is going to extends class a means whatever class a have like this variable and this method everything can be used by b now inside there is no variables there is no methods so just we are extending whatever in class a is there class b is extending so this is equivalent to uh, uh, co java code for this class diagram now i want to test these two classes for that i am writing one more class what this will do this class is going to test these classes how it is working for that what i have to do for every class to test whatever i have to write main method like public static void main i have to write public static void main string args so this is the main method always 
program and execution starts. Here, I want to create first class object of A. So I will say new of A. So whenever new is given, what happens? It will create one object. What type of class object? A class object. So A class object will be created in memory. In A class object, what variable is there? Variable k is available. k is equal to 10. So here one object will be created with value k is equal to 10. And actually here what happens is in the object only non-static members will participate. Here in the inner test, only non-static members will participate. But uh, static members it won't participate in inner test because at the time of class is loading. Whenever class is loading, at that time all static members will be loaded. But whereas non-static members like this, we, how will say non-static? Because static code is not used, therefore this is non-static variable. Here also static is not written, therefore this method also non-static. So these two are non-static, which will be used at the time of object creation like this. So int k is equal to 10, this is a non-static variable. So in object creation, k is equal to 10 is present. And this test one also non static method, so test one method also present inside the object. So this object is created whenever we will say new A, this is object created. And we are storing where? In A1. A of A1, which means A1 is a variable which is of type A. A means A class objects we can hold because this is A class object only. So this A1 can hold of type what type? A class type. So this object also A class type. So A1 can refer to that one means a1 can contain can point to this object so it is pointing to a1 now for example i want to print this value k is equal to 10 i want to print how do you print then add you take help of this object reference a1 we can say a1 dot k here see a1 dot k sop this is system dot out dot print ln a1 dot k means i am trying to print a1 object inside k variable I am trying to print. For that, I can use a1 reference dot, I can give and variable name. So what happens? a1 dot k value 10 will be printed. That's why in output you can see 10 is the output. For this statement, this 10 is the output. Then after that, I am telling a1 dot test1 means it will go to a1 and see test1. So test1 is method, right? So this test1 method will be called. So it will come here test1. So what it is doing, just it is printing int test1. That's why in the output this int test1 came here after that. So int test1 it will come, closing this will come back here. So for a1.test1 the output is int test1. Okay. So this is about class here. Now I want to create class b object also on C. So whenever you say new of b, before whenever you say new of a, a class object is created. Now when you say new of b, <coughs> b class object is created. But whenever you will say B class object will come here and see, immediately it will find extends. So first it will go back here. It won't enter into class B. Class B, whenever as soon as you see extends, it will go back. Extends what? A. So it will go to A class. In A class, what non-static numbers are there? Int k is equal to 10. So k is equal to 10 will be put here. And any non-static methods are there, test one is there. It will go out put here. It is exactly like A class object only, class B also created. Means Class B is extending class A, so it will be similar to class A object and also in class B if any variables methods are there non-static type that also it will be added but here we don't have any in class B so class B looks like exactly similar to class A in, in terms of object if you observe here see it is exactly looks same now, now this reference is what type? B type right? so if B1 should be of type B but whereas A1 is of A type because A class object is referring but here B class object is coming, so B1 should be after B type. Then only it can hold B type reference like this. Now, if I want to print K value here, not this value, then B1 dot K, right? So we can say system dot out dot print L B1 dot K. So B1 dot K then will be printed here after this statement is executed. Now B1 dot test1, if you say if B1 test1 is available, again test1 means here it will go. And see here, whenever it say B1 dot test1. Always it will see whether in B any test 1 is there, it is not there. So it will go back to your inherited method. In A only test 1 is there. So this statement print, this will be printed in test 1. So here, whenever you see B1.k, this term came. Whenever you see B1.test1, this output came. So 